Let's talk about the recent shooting on a movie set done by very anti-Trump activist uh, actor Alec Baldwin. Now, this was a mistake. It was on the film set of a film called Rust that was in development, that is being uh, well, was being filmed in New Mexico, and we are told that there was an accident involving uh, the misfire of a prop gun with blanks. The Western Drama's director of photography, Halnya Hutchins, 42, and its director, Joel Souza, 48, were struck during the incident, uh, according to the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office. Uh, Hutchins was airlifted to the University of New Mexico, Hos New Mexico Hospital, uh, but died from her injuries, and Souza was treated um, but has survived. Baldwin was uh, questioned by the investigators because he was the one firing the gun, uh, and uh, this was apparently uh, an accident, tragic accident. So we have more information from the Daily Mail. Uh, a prop master's union described it uh, on Friday as a live round that was put into the gun that he was given, and uh, he was running around screaming, why was I given a hot gun? The termed hot and cold gun, uh, referring to whether they're loaded with real ammunition or not. He says, in all my years, I've never been handed a hot gun. Uh, a spokesman for both film production and Baldwin said that it was an accident involving a gun loaded with blanks. Uh, they had me pick my gun. I was like, all right, what gun would you like? Uh, and I was like, I don't know. And the armor was like, do you have gun experience? And he was like, a little. And she was like, I don't know what the likes. Uh, this is how you load it. Check it safe. Do you want a hip drawn or cross drawn? He said cross drawn. That sounds fun. And so she says, uh, I'll put some blanks in there and just fire a couple of rounds towards the hill. You, w I, I walk out and she's like, just make sure you pull the hammer all the way back and aim at your target. Uh, the assistant director had declared the gun to be safe. We'll go to the next one, John. Uh, the assistant director had handed it to Alec Baldwin, shouting cold gun to indicate it didn't have any live rounds. And uh, the first official count was released from the sheriff's department on Friday, uh, who uh, put out a five-page filing, which uh, detailed many of the basic logistical details of the shooting, but left many questions unanswered, namely how a live round could have ended up in the gun fired by the actor. Uh, the assistant director said, I did not know live rounds were in the prop gun. Uh, I'm surprised, honestly, that the prop guns can fire live rounds. See, I thought, from what I'm aware, what you're supposed to do with any gun, whether it's mm. supposed to be a prop gun, a live gun, cold, amp, cold rounds, hot rounds, whatever, mm -hmm. is that you are supposed to treat it as if it is yeah. just a standard gun. Don't point it at anybody. Don't don't point it at anything that you don't intend to shoot. And don't, don't go around like saying, like, oh, just give it a test here there are everywhere in in uh baldwin's defense though uh the scene and the way it was being shot called for him to point the gun at the camera and then fire the gun oh okay uh, because you know obviously that was going to be a dramatic it's, moment it's a western movie. you exactly. shoot straight at the camera yeah yeah exactly um but uh, it had a live round and uh shot the lady behind it and the director i mean see from um, e even from that from what i'm aware you're supposed to use mu like movie magic to angle pistols and stuff either way I'm, in in ways yeah. that it looks because you can manipulate cameras. I've got no doubt. I'm I'm no idea. I'm sure you are correct though. Um, but anyway, so uh, Alec Baldwin had been very cooperative, of course, uh, in all of this, and so you know he he doesn't seem to have been uh, doing anything uh, or be responsible for what's happened here. Really, uh, it notes uh, notable that Newsweek report that there were no union members on the set when Alec Baldwin was shot. So the uh, production union uh, were not part of this. And uh, there was a text prior to this from the production manager, as uh, Jack Posobiec reported. Uh, they say, we've now had three accidental discharges. This is super unsafe. That's mm. interesting, isn't it? So on the, the set, there had been three actual live rounds fired uh, prior to this accident uh, because of what appears to be an unsafe work environment. Yeah, or discipline in the uh, in the crew. It does sound uh, <laughs> it's sa it sounds a lot to me. I mean, everybody's been making the comparison. It does mm. sound a lot like the issue incident that happened in the nineties with the crow, which was yeah. also the result of a very unsafe work environment where people were not being um, responsible mm -hmm. on the set. Uh, people were often tired. People were uh, very... They, I think they were working 18-hour days. I don't know exactly what the mm. environment was like at this, but I wouldn't be surprised. Well, I don't either, but the, the thing we're getting out of it is, uh, is not very good news for those people who are concerned about things like gun safety. Uh, anyway, so the question, of course, raises its head, well, was this done by Trump? If you're an insane person on Twitter, 
as this verified check mark posted. Uh, Might the prop gun have been secretly loaded with real bullets by a Trump supporter to punish Alec Baldwin for his Trump parodies? This should be a line of inquiry. What a reach. Imagine how many Trump supporters there are on the set of a Hollywood movie. <laughs> I not, mean, not, not many. many. Yeah. But, uh, but this, this obviously was an insane take. Uh, what they're talking about is Alec Baldwin's Trump impressions. Um, we can get the next one up. Uh, as you can see, he's, uh, he's been doing Saturday Night Live and various other things uh, where he's pretended to be Trump because he, along with the rest of the media class, suffer from Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, personally, this felt like a huge cope to me. I didn't really find it offensive in any way, shape, or form. But uh, but let's have a look at the armorer. That was the person in charge of the guns. Of course they have a TikTok. Don't look much like a Trump supporter to me. They also look, look younger than me. Yes, she's 24. Oh, so she is younger than me. Yes. Hmm. How does she get this job? That's the question. So who is she? The armor on the set, as the Independent informs us, uh, the task with overseeing the prop guns and other potentially dangerous items, was 24-year-old former model and actress who had only served as the head armor previously on one movie, The Old Way, which wrapped not long before the rust shoot. Her name's Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, and she is the daughter of a respected Hollywood firearms expert. Uh, and now you see where the next is. It's all starting to fit yes. in. So she has not got this job through her experience or competence. She's got this job because of who her father was. Uh, this is interesting, I think. Um, but she, she had gone on a podcast last month and said that her interest in following her father's footsteps had only peaked in recent years before taking on the head armorer role for the old way. She was really nervous about it and almost didn't take the job. Why would you be really nervous about it? Why would you almost not take the job? Unless you knew you weren't qualified to do the yes. job which seems to be the case. She apparently uh, said also, as reported by the Mirror, that she wasn't ready for this job. Uh, she says, I almost didn't take the job because I wasn't sure if I was ready, but doing it, it went really smoothly on the, uh, the old way movie. Uh, she went on to express her fears about loading blanks into a gun, claiming they were the scariest thing, and that she needed help from her father, Thel Reed, to get over the fear. I mean, loading, loading blanks into a gun, is that scary? What? Well once again, I think it is the case where when you're on, when you're on the set, even if it is blanks, they are basically a bullet just without the projectile at the end. So right. there is a chance if it does fire that it can still fire mm. shrapnel from the from the casing yeah. and other such things that can be dangerous to people. So I can I can understand the fear, mm. but if you had an experienced armorer on set, perhaps there wouldn't be that. That yeah, fit. and there's a there's a difference between even if for whatever reason if she was qualified, there's a difference between being theoretically qualified and being experienced. Yes, and and being the head armor, the the head person dealing with all of these uh, props at twenty four. Yeah. I mean, it feels it's, like an assistant age. Yeah, it feels it? like she's been thrust into a position of extreme responsibility. Yeah. And presumably based on who her father was. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, she's apparently totally inexperienced with this. Uh, the Daily Mail report that uh, the d two sources told the Daily Beast that she had allegedly given an 11-year-old actress a gun without checking it properly while on the set of uh, The Old Way, that previous film. Uh, and there were a couple of times when she was loading blanks and doing it in a fashion that we thought was unsafe. She was a bit careless with the guns, waving it around every now and again. Again, these are allegations. I can't say they're yet true or false. But this is what's being alleged about the lady. Uh, so anyway, um, as we said, the uh, the thing has gone fairly badly. Um, so a search warrant on Friday uh, said that uh, she'd laid out three prop guns on a cart outside the film filming relation. And the first assistant director, uh, Dave Pauls, grabbed the gun from the cart, brought it to Alec Baldwin, unaware it was loaded with a live round. How could she not know the difference as the chief armorer? Yeah. I mean, surely as the chief armorer, you should be the one supervising all use of any firearm yeah. on the set. And if you're handing a gun to somebody, you should be able to tell them to point that at the ground until we say yeah. not and to. You would think that those guns, I mean, I don't know why a Hollywood movie would need live rounds at all. I mean, especially with special effects as they are these days. I'm aware that in the, like, yeah. the 20s and stuff, apparently they did use live rounds <laughs> well, in guns. Because well, we've wrapped back around, evidently. Evidently, but like, I, I mean, I, you know, someone can inform me why they would use actual live rounds on a Hollywood movie set. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she had failed to properly mark it. Um, cold gun. Hall shouted before handing the gun to Baldwin. 
And uh, then they were filming a scene in some Old West-style church where Baldwin apparently aimed the uh, gun towards the camera, pulled the trigger, and accidentally killed Halmia Hutchins and uh, Joel Souza, and injured Joel Souza. Uh, so yeah, not taking responsibility uh, for being in the position she was, uh, being, again, careless, we can say, and it seems that she achieved this position because of who her father was. Uh, so anyway, needless to say, she's deleted her social media accounts because why would you want to be on the internet when you've caused this kind of problem? I don't know what kind of uh, legal ramifications will come for this woman. Uh, to be fair, and as much as I'm sure a lot of people don't like him, I don't think Alec Baldwin did anything wrong here. Well... I think he was the one of the to 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 play a little bit of devil's yeah, yeah, advocate in, in in that direction. Yeah. I believe that he was one of the producers of the film, which should right, okay. which should mean that he has a certain level of oversight over who they yeah. hire for certain roles. Right. So yeah. he might have been in the position where he was okaying mm -hmm. her hiring, but that once again is the cause of nepotism. Yeah. Yeah. But so it, so, uh, but at the same time, that's still is a pretty horrible situation to be put in if, you, if you're doing what you assume is just a typical you know hollywood yeah. scene where you just shoot a gun and all of a sudden there's blood everywhere yeah people I would, are screaming yeah i would not like to be in his shoes right now no and but i mean in, in a sort of direct sense you know he didn't do anything wrong he obviously didn't mean to yeah. shoot someone uh, this is obviously it, a tragic it, accident it, it, it does seem like uh, the piling up of a number of bad decisions yeah. that has led to this uh, John's telling us that there's a violation of the safety rules of the Actors Guild. He should have known. Uh, no camera person behind the camera if you take a shot at it. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm not. I'm no expert in these in these things. Well, but I mean, on a sort of direct level. Yeah, I think uh, with a yeah, de decision like that, it wrong. might be the director who would who would yeah. being the director of the set to mm -hmm. say get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, Alec Baldwin is apparently cancelled a bunch of his future projects because. Of course, this has affected him quite badly. He's absolutely devastated. Uh, he's pulled the plug on numerous other works. And uh, a source close to the 63-year-old actor told People Magazine that he's cancelling other projects and needs to take some time to himself to recenter himself. Well, understandable, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, the, I could have put a bunch of memes up about all of this uh, afterwards, but honestly, it just felt cruel. You know, like, it's, it's easy to find the memes amusing on the internet and... You know, I, I'm not saying don't post them or anything like that, but it is not really necessary. I don't think it was um, his fault or anything uh, directly anyway, but uh, maybe he was responsible for her I, I do getting agree. that job. It would be it would be tasteless for, for us exactly. to do anything like that it right now be because tasteless. at the end of the day, this is still a tragedy that's happened. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's an awful, awful thing to have happen. But, the, but the, the, the point that I think we can really highlight with this is this is why meritocracy is a necessary force whenever you're dealing with anything that might be dangerous. It's useful to have those people who are good at their jobs and not just there because their fathers happen to be good at their jobs. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full thing at 1pm every weekday at lotuseaters.com or you can sign up to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. Yeah, we've got loads of really good stuff. Uh, every week we have a Contemplations and Epochs episode that goes up, and in the Contemplations we talk about just interesting things. And uh, the Epochs episodes are probably my favourite because I love talking about history. Uh, this latest one is we're doing a, a bit of a series on the Hundred Years' War and uh, why England kept winning. And we've not finished it yet, and you're going to really enjoy the end of that one. But uh, we've also got uh, other excellent episodes that we do, like the book club. Uh, the most recent one was Shooting an Elephant by George Orwell. This was about his time in Burma as a colonial officer, and when he was tasked with the shooting of a rampaging elephant. And it's really, really interesting uh, what the circumstance of the thing was. But we also have lots of other content, such as premium articles, which have audio tracks on them for our silver and gold subscribers. And we do premium podcasts about things that we don't really feel that we can put on YouTube or have done a particularly large amount of research into. And so it's, uh, it's worth keeping them uh, slightly more private. And we also do lots of very interesting interviews, such as this one with comedian Steve Hughes, which was really fascinating because I didn't expect him to be a philosopher. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. Also, the last thing to mention is the live event content we have. So we occasionally, when we get around to it, doing our live events and the videos from them are on the website as premium, of course, because people came to see and paid. Mm. So go and check that out. This is on the worst of critical race theory. Yes. And I do mean the worst. It's unconscionable. Yeah. So if you'd like access to all that premium content, go to lotusleaders.com and subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.